And uh, could we invite the Tenants Protection Association, um, Lisa Coulter's here for Helen Gattoni. Do pass on our best wishes to Helen. I understand she's not well. So. Yes, as you can tell, I'm not Helen Gartoni, yep. who you were expecting. Um, my name is Lisa Coulter, and I'm here with my colleague, Nikki Smith. And we're both staff members at Tenants Protection Association Christchurch. Um, you've all got uh, pen and paper in front of you, and I'd just like to invite you to do something. Uh, I'd like you to think about what home means to you, and in one word, in one word, write down what you mean when you think of what home means to you. I just invite you to do that. So I'm wondering if I could ask you just to read out the one word that you think of when you think of the word home. Sanctuary. Sanctuary. Family. 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 Security. Security. Fondness. Fondness. Security. Family. Safety. <laughs> Warm. Warm. Peace. Peace. Well-being. Comfort. Haven, uh, thank you for sharing your words. We hear that the words that you've used have been shared with us over many years that we've been working here in Christchurch on behalf of the people of Christchurch, especially tenants. Uh, these words are the things that, uh, and these emotions and feelings are the things that City Council have been providing to thousands of people in Christchurch for nearly 100 years. Whatever decisions that you make and whatever direction this long-term plan takes, the people you serve and have a duty and opportunity to serve in the future must be in the forefront of your minds in any decisions that you're about to make. Many of you may not know what our Māori name is or even that we have one. It's Te Topu Te Kai Noho and it means to watch over, protect people who stay or settle or live in a place, and that's why we're here today and have made our submission. Christchurch, after the earthquakes, more than ever, needs to know what home feels like. It's the basis on which you build the rest of your lives from. We're not going to go into the detail of our submission. I'm sure you've read it. We want to say that the Christchurch City Council and City Housing have been and continues to be one of the most respected landlords in the country, never forgetting what social housing means, what it truly means. With the changes going forward with the provision of housing by the Council, it's essential that whatever pressures might come now or at any time in the future, that housing assets held by the Council are never given up that all of the aspirations within the long-term plan to continue to provide social housing are never let go. The difference that the Council has made by providing so many homes to so many people has a value that can never be quantified on a spreadsheet. Thank you for your work and your time and your commitment to the people of Christchurch. We'll continue to hold to our kaupapa and we'll continue to hold you to yours. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Yanni. Thank you. It's, it's obviously a number of um, issues that you've raised. I, I was just really interested in um, how we engage. You've, just on, on page 128, you've said that you know, the consultation document wasn't citizen friendly and also that the process was too short and the public meetings too controlled. Mm. In terms of housing, because there are some quite big things we're proposing to do, but do you I um, think there's a different way going forward that we should engage around that ho those housing issues to try and, I don't know, help people understand what we're trying to do but also talk to the, the community about what the solutions are. And people need to be able to visualise and imagine themselves actually in that housing in the future and what it means. IRRS and come related rent means nothing to somebody, but if you start describing the paperwork they have to fill in, the amount of time they have to talk to somebody or not talk to them, they can imagine how that affects them. People need to visualise what their flats will look like. They need to know if something will be different from them, from the people that are next to them. Uh, we've asked people what they thought about the long-term plan. They didn't even know what it was. But when you ask people, how would you feel 
if you had to have a completely new contract or a new house, they suddenly have an opinion. So you have to make it real for people. We heard from the Human Rights Commission that um, one thing that's often overlooked in housing, and it was interesting a number of councils raised this point, was security, and yes. in particular people's basic right, human right, to have security of tenure. Do you think our proposals in terms of um, working with government or in other, other sectors, private developers, do you think that they raise any issues around um, security of tenure or control from council's point of view over the, the, that ability to um, provide housing? To be honest, you have a choice about what sort of tenure you provide. You also have a choice about whether you give notices for people to move out. And traditionally, city housing has had the view that once you have that home, that's your home. Obviously, Housing New Zealand's are now introducing reviewable tenancies, and some people who thought they had security of tenure may now have to leave. And I would say that whatever housing arrangements you enter into to, to provide housing, that security of tenure would be the cornerstone of that housing meeting that person's need. Yep. I think we've been pretty clear that we're only interested in building communities, not just houses. Um, Phil? Thank you, Lisa. And it's um, nice to hear council being thanked for the services that you know, we support. Um, can I just ask you, I'm oh, sorry, I hope you can hear me. Um, besides, around the housing, of course, there are a lot of people who use or deal with have other needs besides the actual um, shape of the house alone. So what, and what you understand, in fact, there's no proposal in the LPP to, to reduce um, community development funding. But, we're aware that in previous years um, it has been reduced for a number of, it's been reduced um, over the years. So I'm just wondering, is it, do you, I'm just wondering, is one of the NGOs, do you see perhaps a need for our community development funding, or certainly community funding, to actually be increased? Well, uh, Helen and I were here in support of Sharon Torsonson from Council of Social Services the day before I, yesterday, I think it was, and we certainly endorsed their submission on, on that, and I know you heard from Sharon. And I can certainly say, as someone who works in an NGO, uh, the phone calls aren't stopping or getting less, uh, and the time that it takes, it's more involved. There's certainly that need's not going to decrease. We've always been busy, to be honest, Phil. It's just a new type of stress on top of stresses that were already there. Thank you. Rev? Thanks. Yeah. Um, I note from your, <coughs> your start that the TPA aims to promote and advance the rights, interests and welfare of tenants. Um, and that, that's great, and there's some good stuff about housing, but there's also quite a lot of stuff which, in your submission, not related to housing, which I was quite interested in. Uh, one was <coughs> around Orion, which is a, our electricity grid mm. company. You said control of the electricity network is vital to tenant access to reasonable power charges and so must be retained by the council. Are you aware that the power price is regulated by the Commerce Commission? I am. What I'm, uh, the reason that that is in there is because when we have talked to people about what's important to them in the long-term plan, it is those basics like concerns around power supply, uh, who is going to be there to fix things and how quickly is it going to get fixed. And that was some feedback that we got from the people when we talked about the, the power charges like are power set by the, yep. the power charges are not set by us. I understand. Okay, cool. Uh, and also... But it's the retail... I think well, that this is what your tenants are talking about are the retail price, and which, is, which is not a Ryan. Yeah. yeah. The providers yeah. can have higher prices. Well evidence. Um, and you say here the last uh, paragraph, your first page, for example, if council assets are sold or part sold to a shareholder or entity under a takeover arrangement, then 90% can compulsorily acquire the remaining shares. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. I think the concerns are, especially with the new housing trust that's being developed, is that you can have very good intentions to enable something. But ultimately, again, the people that we've talked to want to know that there is no threat at all that if uh, control of companies are lost, that uh, especially the new housing trust, very concerned that if a desire for the use of that asset changes, that 
although there may be at the moment an aspiration to hold on to the social housing, it could change. Um, Glenn? Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Um, as you know, we've tried to promote uh, TPA's concept of a rental register. Uh, it was seen at the time that we couldn't afford it. We've written to MB, haven't heard back yet. Uh, have you got a view over whether a uh, register is best run locally or nationally? I'm sure Helen would probably answer that question better, <coughs> but I think the register is essential. Yeah. <coughs> That's great. Look, thank you very much, Lisa, and, and do pass on our best wishes to thank Helen. You. We're sorry that she couldn't make it, but, you know, hope, wish her well. I will and, do that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.